All right. Well, good morning, everyone. Good morning. All right. Come on. Good morning. All right. That's more like it. All right. So I'm ready to get you all up and moving a little bit. We're going to get started um, with, I wanted to ask you, starting off with, well, what was your first experience with technology as a learner? So I'm going to take you back down memory lane. So thinking, I see a lot of thinking going on. Go ahead and get up, stretch. I know you've been sitting for a little while. Get those ideas flowing. Or if you want to sit down. But get up, get up. Come on, you've been sitting for a while. It's early morning. Turn and talk to your elbow partner and share your first experience. Good, thank you. Talk about your first experience. Great. As you share and you're ready, come back to your table and take out that Slido app. So whenever you're ready, go ahead and punch that into the Slido app. We'd love to hear all about your first experiences with technology as a learner. So go on into that Slido app. What was your first experience with technology as a learner? Great, I already see some over here going into the Slido app. Go on into the Slido app and share either your first experience or something that you heard from someone else. All right, so, so we go, oh, Oregon Trail. All right, so we got some Oregon Trail. See some smiles back there. Great, so you can share what you, your experience or that experience of the person that you spoke with. Logo, Google. Yes, Prodigy, the internet service. Wow, punch cards from the 70s, yes. Oh my gosh, Napster, I remember that. Yeah, first grade, I love it. Yep, that word processor, I remember, I had that little brother too. Oh, the Apple IIe. I was waiting for this one, I was waiting for the Commodore 64. Yeah, Commodore 64. All right, are you ready to see what my first experience as a learner was? Are you ready? All right, keep them coming. Here it is. Anybody know what this is? Trash 80, Radio Shack TRS 80. So this was my first experience with technology. When I was in the third grade, my teacher brought this in and I was hooked right away. Um, and I was starting to, I was like, she, all she had to show me was the basics. 10, I would typed in 10, did my print, hit run, and before you knew it, I was creating loops. I mean, I didn't even know. I was a Latina in tech back then in the third grade. <laughs> Who knew? I didn't even know I was doing that. Um, but I was so excited that I was able to create games for my classmates. But of course, I had to save the games, and I saved them on those very large floppy disks. Who remembers those five-inch, all right, yeah, five-inch, <laughs> what was that? 
Oh, the bigger ones were the eight, right? Okay, so for me, there were the five, then, you, then we had the eight also. So what I like to do is, and I want to thank you for taking the um, getting up, sharing with your partners, and also engaging with the app. Um, but I want to tell you a little bit about, well, they're cut off up there, but I want to tell you a little bit about um, me and what my purpose is in supporting LA Unified. So I grew up in LA Unified in a neighborhood called Pacoima. Anybody in the house from Pacoima? Granada Hills. Granada Hills, okay, the valley. Anybody else from the valley? No, the valley, okay, yes, yes, where? Toluca Lake. Toluca Lake, all right, kind of north of the boulevard there and um, Ventura Boulevard. So we're gonna bring more people next year, right? So. <laughs> Pacoima is in the northernmost San Fernando Valley of um, where LA Unified resides. And LA Unified is enormous, 720 square miles. So I grew up in the most northern part, and I'm very proud to say that I'm homegrown LA Unified having attended pre-K through 12 in LA Unified. And we currently support 1,322 schools in LA Unified. You know, I like to tell everyone when I get asked, you know, like, so how long you've been within LA Unified? I love to say that my mom dropped me off in kindergarten and she still hasn't picked me up yet. I'm still waiting for her. Now that she's retired, she's off on her own. Um, so having been educated within the system, I now lead the system in innovating, promising ed tech practices through professional learning, not only for our educators, but we start with our leaders, our executive leaders, our principals, and our administrators, and we currently have 2,500. And that in turn impacts our 25,000 teachers. And in turn, another impact point is for our over 700,000 students that we're supporting in LA Unified. So little by little, our students are beginning to see themselves in the educators and administrators that are supporting them in their classrooms. But as you can see, we still have a long way to go. When students have educators who look like them and share similar life experiences, it brings much deeper personal relevance and meaning to their classroom and learning experience. As I look back on my own experience as a student in LA Unified, I clearly remember those who looked like me were those who ensured that I had a hot meal at lunchtime, as well as, we used to call them las señoras, out on the playground who took care of us during recess, lunch, and after school as we waited for our parents to pick us up after work. Now, oops, I'm sorry. I want to make sure I capture all this information for you. You know, now that I look at my charge here in LA Unified, it's imperative that our students see the leaders that look like them. That's why it's really critical that beyond representation, my charge is to build equity by providing and creating accessible opportunities where students can engage in meaningful, relevant, and most importantly, rigorous learning experiences. And the learning experiences all must lead with instruction not only for our students, but for our adult learners as well. Transformation of teaching and learning cannot be done alone. And we use, in LA Unified, the ISTE standards and the ADCAR change management models to inform and guide our work in cultivating change agents among our education leaders. LA Unified began collaborating with ISTE and aligning our shared ideals around leading with instruction, personalized learning, and equity in 2016, at the same time that the standards for students were being refreshed, making LA Unified the first district in the world 
to adopt the standards. The ISTE standards gave, are currently giving us the vocabulary we need to move forward and help us put a name to the process of the instructional transformation that we are pursuing. We also understand how important it is to offer very various models of support along a continuum. And that's where the ADCAR change management ProSci model comes in to frame our work in designing various models of support to ensure that our teachers and our leaders have multiple entry points throughout the entire school year to refine their practice. These frameworks allow for that intentional, strategic, and implementation of our three content initiatives. One, the ISTE standards. Two, digital citizenship. And three, computer science education. By cultivating our change agents around this work, it has very strong global implications. And our Board of Education recognize that computer science is about innovating, designing, creating tools and resources that critically impact our lives. Last year, our Board of Education unanimously approved a resolution to expand computer science to include our youngest learners in LA Unified, because traditionally, CS was regulated only for secondary students. So this highlights LA Unified's commitment to providing computer science to all students by 2025. Wow, it's just around the corner. By advocating for policy changes in the area of education that directly connects to the immediate lives and future careers of our students, compu through computer science, we are creating opportunities to create the agents of change. And I love these faces, and all the pictures you see here are LA Unified kids. So just wanted to share that with you. So two years ago, when computer science education was added to the portfolio of the Instructional Technology Initiative, we immediately we went to the data. I wanted to know who is participating in computer science education. And what we found was that overwhelmingly in our AP computer science courses, white and Asian males were the predominant demographic participating in AP computer science. And for me, that just didn't seem right. In a district where 73% of our students are Latino and 8% are African American, there was very minimal participation in AP computer science. So then uh, we brought the team together and we said, we need to look, look at this further. So we pulled out some of the data of what's happening in the high-tech sector, and we discovered that our LA Unified data of AP Computer Science was mimicking that of the tech sector. So, you know, this is, has been a, a big partnership that we've engaged in with CS for CA, and then yesterday, they released some information, some um, stats that really support our urgency in bringing computer science to all students in LA Unified. Yesterday, CS for CA shared that African American, Latino, and Native American professionals are vastly underrepresented in tech fields, representing only eight, again, only 8% of the Silicon Valley tech workforce and 15% of the national computing workforce. Less than 30% are women and less than 2% are women of color. There's little and to no racial gender diversity in the creation of new technologies, business ventures, or an investment limiting our innovation potential. So at the core of our CS expansion in LA Unified is the lens of equity, access, and opportunity. 
We cannot begin to change who is represented in the field of computing if we don't focus on who is participating in computer science in our pre-K-12 classrooms. So we have an enormous task here in LA Unified to have our Latino and African American students equipped with the belief, the belief systems and skill sets to know that they too can participate in computer science education. This also transcends into our work around shifting the hearts and minds of our educators who also do not see themselves as computer science educators. By providing professional learning in computational thinking, computer science concepts, in a very multidisciplinary approach for during the instructional school day, we want our students to believe that they, too, can do the work, which is a result of empowering our educators with CS education. So in LA Unified, we definitely have our call to action. Now, how can we together, all of you here together, in this room and in our community, facilitate CS education with the lens of equity, access, and opportunity? What might you do? So we're gonna have another opportunity for you to engage with those at your table to really ponder and let's come up with some possible solutions to our problem of practice. How can we facilitate CS equity, access and opportunity for all students? So I welcome you to have this conversation with your peers. You'll have about three minutes and then we'll open it up with a microphone for us to share out. So go ahead. All right, we have about 17 more seconds, 17 more seconds.
All right, wonderful. Go ahead and wrap up your last thought. And we would love to hear, I walked around and I heard some great conversations and some potential solutions to our collective problem of practice. Great. So we're looking for those who would love to share out. And we have a microphone right over there in the back there. All right. I heard lots of great conversation up here in the front. And over here in the back, I heard some great ideas as well. Don't be shy now. Do we have anyone? Lots of great ideas. We have one over here and one over there too. All right, well, so we'll start over here. Share us, let us know who you are and where you're from. Go ahead, Rachel. Tell me, remind me where you are and where you're from. Um, hi, good morning, everybody. I'm Evelyn, and uh, I teach fourth grade in a San Francisco elementary school. And, and hi, I'm Rachel Schechter. I work at Houghton Mifflin, and we actually have a women in technology initiative going on right now. And one of the things we really want to focus on even more is role models. And um, we shared a story. We were talking about how powerful it can be when alumni from the school or even just young, young people, um, you know, five seven to ten years older, can come back and share their experiences to really be immediate role models. And that kind of opens, opens yep. the opportunity yep. um, to be able to see yourself yes. um, and being able to pursue that. Uh, pathway. Oh, wonderful. Yeah. You want to share also from our fourth grade teacher? No. Nope. Did you want to share too? That was your conversation. All right. Thank you. Oh, I love it. Bringing mentors in. Come on in. Hi, uh, I'm Mitch Slater. I was a classroom teacher for 20 years before I started uh, a company to make actually math curriculum uh, systems. So my experience has been in order to really expand access to these kind of uh, programs that we need to to change student mindset around mathematics, especially starting in those lower grades where we can provide that level of productive struggle with appropriate scaffolds and support so kids can feel successful and set a new goal, struggle, feel successful, and iterate that and iterate that. You do that over the course of school year and after school year, um, kids see themselves as mathematicians and it opens up uh, interest and engagement in these kind of uh, initiatives. Oh, yes, thank you. Yes, giving them that hands-on application to really live it. All right, we have another one over here. I'm Mary. Hi, Mary. And, and I'm, as a former computer science student in college uh, who ended up with an art degree, <laughs> I was really captivated by what Marvin here had to say. I think what's really missing in K-12 is the idea that this is a math course. It's not math. Computer science is a language. So you yep. need to equate it as, I'm going to learn German. I'm going to learn Russian. You're not going to learn math. So when you set that expectation that it is hard, it's hard to learn German. It's hard to learn Russian. It's even harder to learn Chinese, right? But when we say it's an, you know, an extension of math, I think that is a disservice to the expectation of this teacher and the student, because it's dang hard to learn. Yes, thank you so much for sharing that. Yes, it's a literacy, right? We heard from our secondary principals when we first started our expansion. They said it's too late to teach them once they arrive in secondary. We need to start earlier. So thank you for sharing that. We have another one over here. I'm Mark Laundy. I'm an instructional technology specialist in the Cupertino district, and I came up with the, the mentorship idea as well, but one of my table mates made a, a really good point, is we, we need to be aware and conscious of giving them this extra burden on top of being the representative of, uh, of their, their minority, or in the case of women, their majority. Uh, do we want to put that extra burden on them? Uh, and just a, a little bit of a story, very short. Uh, I spent uh, summer at a, a uh, fellowship that was placed at Lockheed Martin, and I was really encouraged to see what I thought was a, a surprising diversity amongst mm -hmm. their engineers at Lockheed Martin Sunnyvale. Nice. So there's some hope. Oh, there is. Thank you. Thank you for sharing. Yes, and in this world of education, we all come to the table and 
roll up our sleeves. So thank you. Last question. Um, I'm Abigail or Joseph. I yeah. um, work down in the San Jose um, at the Harker School, and I'm a computer scientist by academics and trade who went into education. Um, and what I wanted to bring was to say that we need to start thinking of computer science as a tool. It's not a standalone subject to be feared. Um, I think we need to empower our teachers to embrace the fact that they can't know everything and won't know everything, and that they can learn aside their students. So the only way to really break this equity and access issue is that all teachers need to embrace it and need to introduce it into the classrooms. That's the only way it's gonna to touch every student. Yes, well said, I love that, yes. And that takes me into our education leaders here. Again, that, those mindsets, shifting the mindsets of their teachers and to empower them as education leaders with our expansion, like again, the burden, but this is part of the shifting landscape that we're seeing in education. So again, in order for our students and teachers to become the change agents, they need to see their leaders leading that change. A lot of our teachers, just like we heard today, they don't see themselves, they don't think that they can teach CS. So what we're doing is to provide opportunities for our educators. I'm gonna share with you a little bit, Teacher Braley, these fun ways to, in you're these entry level, collaborative ways, fun, interactive, like Principal Braley here, she's engaged in a code.org dance party and we're making connections to, for our leaders to see that these are natural connections. You might even set up a playground so that it's much more of an easier entry point as opposed to a barrier. I know, I love it. So some key takeaways of the experience are to lead with the ISTE standards, a, a professional learning approach that is ISTE standards based. With the ISTE standards for education leaders, we have been able to not only just leverage digital tools and resources, yes, you could do that to accelerate learning, but also cultivate those innovative practices amongst your school leadership and your district leadership so that they are empowered to enact a consistent system-wide change. Again, creating those opportunities for your various learners on a continuum. Um, I know my time is running short here, but I do want to share with you, you know, overall, cultivating agents of change is personal for me. I have two small children who are currently students in LA Unified, and at the turn of the century, they will be in their 80s. So every day, I live with the urgency knowing that my efforts are going to impact the next three generations of change agents to come. So thank you very much, and I'll be hanging around later. I would love to meet all of you. Thank you. Thank you.